Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory, and on this episode, we are going to be diving into our new 75 gigawatt nuclear reactor system. This is what we built to be able to power our mega factory, and I'm going to show you all of the various components that went into building this massive nuclear power plant sporting 30 nuclear reactors and processing 600 uranium per minute. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into it. Now I know it's been a little bit since I've put out an episode, but I have been chipping away at the mega factory and of course working on this reactor system that's here. I did kind of take the summer off to just kind of re, uh, basically recharge the old batteries. Um, get myself revitalized to dive into making some more videos this fall. And we're kicking it off with this one here for our nuclear reactor. So what did we do to build this plant? So there was a lot of things that went into it. This is a completely 100% recycling nuclear power plant that's here. We are going to be using uranium, it's converted into plutonium fuel rods way off into the distance over there and then dumped into an awesome sink for awesome sink tickets. So we don't end up with a massive amount of nuclear waste just kicking around here. This is all getting processed. So, and then of course, all of its support materials are coming from over at the mega factory over off into the distance. And we've done a little nifty trick with our water supply here as well that is feeding into all of the reactors for cooling. So let's look at the first bit here. All right, when it comes with dealing with uh, the recycling process, I kind of basically had everything all calculated as to what I needed to build everything. And so I knew I was gonna be recycling and to be able to do that recycling, we did have to feed some materials down here to be able to make this all happen. So the first thing of course, is we've got iron plate coming down in here as well as concrete that is all feeding down over here so the iron plate is coming into this system here this is our nitric acid assembly that we have here nitric acid takes water it takes nitrogen gas and it takes iron plate to be able to make our nitric acid which is used for the recycling process so we brought our iron plate line over from the mega factory here. It runs down our conveyor system and then feeds into this three blender little manufacturing system that we have here right now, as well as way off into the distance over there. And I'll show it to you a little bit later on. Um, there is a nitrogen gas reservoir over there or a nitrogen gas node that we are pulling all of our nitrogen from and it's coming down here and it's fed right down here below us so that is feeding into here and then our water our water we're pulling it from that lake way up on the cliff side there so that we don't have to deal with any of the head lift issues that usually pertain to dealing with liquids because that up there is our highest point of head lift meaning anything that we use down here, we don't have to use water pumps to increase that head lift because your head lift will always equal whatever the highest point of your water is. So keep that in mind when you're building something like this, have your water up sitting high. So this feeds water line down in here. So we got our water, our nitrogen gas and our steel plate, and that's making for us 90 cubic meters per minute of sulfuric, or sorry, nitric acid that is running into our recycling section. I'll get to the recycling section here in a little bit. So the next contributor to the recycling comes in the form of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is run through a refinery where you have sulfur and water combined in the refinery to be able to make sulfuric acid. We have, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it 10 refineries here, all processing, making our sulfuric acid. In fact, one of these, I believe I have, oh, I've already reduced it by 10 per minute because I didn't want it to cause any back issues because in the process 
further on our line here, we also end up with some excess waste sulfuric acid that ends up feeding back into the system as well. So, but these refineries, we have a water line that's coming down from our water plant up there. And when we get to the nuclear reactors, I'll show you that water plant that we've got up there and all of the lines of water that we have come to support it all. So that all feeds down this way, feeding in, and we are exiting out on this side with the sulfuric acid, of which I do have it all color coded so that you can tell the difference on the lines when you're looking at them. This kind of browny, sludgy looking one, it's closest you can get to a yellow for the sulfuric acid. Over here, we kind of have this off white color that works good for the nitrogen or the nitric acid that we're using. It's almost uh, like an identical match for color matching. So that identifies our pipes really easily as we're flowing all through here. So the next bit that we're going to look at is our encased uranium cells. So now we're actually getting into the nuclear bits. All right, way off into the distance, we in a cave in the swamp areas over there, there was a node of uranium that I'm getting 600 uranium per minute off of, and that is feeding down to here. I don't have it connected right now so that we can fly around and look at all this before I actually turn this plant on. So I have not turned this on yet. My fingers are crossed. I've done all the calculations. I'm hoping that it's all set up right, but right now it hasn't been turned on. So. What happens here is the uranium feeds down on this lower conveyor feed and feeds up into all of these blenders. There's 12 blenders in line here to be able to make the uranium fuel cells. And what does it take? Obviously, we've got our uranium, 50 items per minute, and then we have concrete at 15 items per minute and sulfuric acid. And this is, of course, where we get our waste sulfuric acid that we have combined into our loop of sulfuric acid that's here, as well as, of course, that sulfuric acid gets used in our recycling plant. So it's all getting consumed, so none of the system will end up getting backed up at all. Twelve blenders making all of the uranium fuel cells that we need. This is processing 100% of that 600 uranium that's coming down here. This entire factory was done, this power plant was designed to support 600 uranium per minute. So now we look into, I guess it's the manufacturers here, which actually start making the uranium fuel rod. So let's have a look at that. All right, so the uranium fuel rods, that is a three item manufacturing that combines. We look at this, it takes encased uranium cells of which we're not feeding through right now because i haven't turned on the re uranium it also takes encased industrial beams of which that is pulling over from our main factory off into the distance there as well as it takes electromagnetic control rods which of course is also being used way over there now there is some excess on the uh, electromagnetic control rods which end up having to get fed back over to the main factory because they get used in another process that's out there. So they actually make a, a, a line, they come down this way, they feed in through here, they feed all of these manufacturers. And then I believe they're used, they might be used over in the recycling section as well too, to make the uh, plutonium fuel cells. And then whatever's left over is actually feeding back on another conveyor system there feeding up to the top floor to be able to be used in the last components of our mega factory. So what do we got here? We've got like tons of these. This is all making uranium fuel cells. I think this is actually set up to make six uranium fuel rods per minute is what we've got this all set up at. 15 manufacturers all used to be able to process the uranium fuel cells that are coming off to here and manufacturing them and converting them over to uranium fuel rods. Of course, those uranium fuel rods then end up exporting down this way. And now we're getting into the actual power generations and the reactors we've got here. All right, so here we are looking at our reactors. We have 30 nuclear reactors set up here 
which is designed to accommodate all of the uranium that is running through our factory here. Each one is broken into sections of 10 reactors and we basically have our fuel rods coming down this way. They are splitting into the two reactors, run down, split, run down, split, run down, split, all the way down the entire line here. Then we have our water coming in. Two reactors is 600 water per minute. That is the equivalent of two water extractors overclocked with three power shards to be able to produce enough water for two reactors. So you can just imagine what it's going to look like up there with 30 reactors here. We've got lots of water supply coming down from up on that mountainside. So we have five separate lines here. Every one of these water lines that are coming in are all running at 600 water per minute. And then, so the first line splits off to the first two reactors and then so on and so forth down the line here. The next one splits off to those two, splits off to those two, splits off to those two to be able to make our, uh, have our cooling system all running in here. Of course, all the water supply is here. It's not on, we're not generating any power yet. And as you can see, based off of all the equipment that I have now, um, our power needs are significantly higher than what we're generating right now. But fortunately, not all of it is running all at the same time, but it will be when we finish that top floor of the mega factory. So of which it's nearly done. Uh, I will be getting that done hopefully here in the next week or so. And then I will showcase everything that's done in the mega factory. There was a bunch of stuff that I ended up skipping after the last episode because it kind of took the summer off. Uh, but we are going to get caught up here right away. So that's those setups there. That's three groups of 10 reactors all combined together to be able to do our power generation. This is how we handle our input. Of course, there is also waste coming off of this line. How do we handle that waste? Well, let's have a look underneath. Underneath here, we have all of the waste uranium is going to flow down through this system and we'll merge with the other reactor groups right here to be able to all combine in and then it cycles around and feeds the upper level. So let's go have a look at that upper level. All right, here we are with our uranium waste recycling process that we have here. So First things first, we have six blenders here. This makes our non-fizzle uranium. So we are going to take uranium waste, 37.5 per minute per blender, as well as we are combining silica. This is our nitric acid and our sulfuric acid is all flowing in this way. It exports non-fizzle uranium as well as water coming off of these blenders. So the water waste, what are we going to do with that water waste? Well, I came up with a little solution to be able to, it's, it's nothing fancy. It's just, I think the easiest way that I didn't ever have to worry about the water backing up at all. So coming out on this side, we have our uranium, uh, non-fizzle uranium is coming down this way and feeds off that way we'll get into that here in a minute but then our water is all being gathered up which i believe is about 90 water per minute is what we're getting off of this as waste we're recycling that water back through these refineries and i ended up with the alternate recipe for pure copper so i'm combining the water with some copper that we've got feeding in and i'm just washing this copper ore with the refinery using up this is all 100 percent to consume the water wastewater this is not about manufacturing copper this is all about making sure 100 percent of the wastewater is used and then that is all feeding in the uh, copper ingots are flowing down this way and it's just dumping into an awesome sink i don't need it anymore it's just that's all to deal with this wastewater. I never have to worry about this wastewater because I have more than enough copper coming in here 
to be able to uh, make sure that this system is always, if there's water here, it's going to be processing copper ingots and running down the line. I got to, I'm trying my best to remember to not move my hand around so much that you guys don't get dizzy, but I think I'm failing miserably, but I will try to do better. All right, so after the water, wastewater processing has been taken care of, what are we doing with the non-fizzle uranium? Well, let's have a look at that. Non-fizzle uranium is fed into these three particle accelerators, and that is being combined with uranium waste to make our plutonium pellets. So we have all of our waste uranium is now being converted over and it's fed in on this side over here and then exports out as plutonium pellets. That's how we're handling our uranium waste. Now, what do we do with those plutonium pellets? All right, the plutonium pellets are all consumed up by these nine assemblers that are here. These assemblers are making encased plutonium cells. So we're just combining them with concrete that we have coming from our mega factory way over there is feeding down. It works its way over here. And we have our encased uranium cells are all getting manufactured and then they are dumping out this way. So now we need to turn those cells, those your are uh, the plutonium cells into something that we can actually Recycle because right now we're still not at a point where this can be dumped into an awesome sink yet That is handled over here. We now have these six manufacturers that are combining four different components of which all But the bottom one here is fed from our mega factory way off into the distance So what are we pulling over here? We've got 30 encased plutonium cells that are coming into here as well as well, sorry, it's actually 7.5 per minute. And then 4.5 per minute of steel beams. We have 1.5 per minute of electromagnetic control rods, and then 2.5 per minute of heat sinks. All coming from our mega factory over there as a support system to be able to run the nuclear power plant. And that is all feeding into here. And what are we making? We're making one plutonium fuel rod. It's actually 0.25 fuel rods per minute coming out of the each one of these machines, which doesn't sound like a lot, but this, these six machines here handle all of the waste for 30 nuclear reactors. Now these, we're running them at top, like we, we couldn't add any more uranium here without adding more of everything that we've got here because everything is right set to scale of exactly what you need starting with our 600 uranium at that end and coming out to plutonium fuel rods getting dumped into an awesome sink here so we're really only getting like one and a half fuel rods per minute but they are worth a pretty good penny of uh awesome sink tickets so it's still going to climb up our, our our tickets really well as those are being manufactured. That is our entire nuclear processing down here. So now I wanna fly over, I'm gonna show you some of the support systems that are supplying this, and that is our nitrogen gas setup as well as the water pumping station that we have up on that hillside. All right, here we are at our nitrogen extraction point, and as you can see here, I still have a couple of nodes of nitrogen that aren't being used uh, but we have all of the nitrogen that we need for our factory with what we've got supplied here right now so we've got our fracker sitting here that's working on the well and then the extractors are all gathering up our nitrogen they're feeding them up on these pipe systems all up there of course it is 600 uh, cubic meters of gas per minute on these pipes and that's all feeding way back over at our factory, way over there. So the next little pit stop here is going to be our water extraction lake that we've got up on the top of that cliffside. All right, so all of the water that is used for our nuclear power plant here and all of its support services that are coming in um, are all, all the water supplied from that lake up on the hillside here. There are 17 water pipes here running at 600 
cubic meters of water per minute. And that is our support infrastructure. Of course, if each one of these is running at 600, that's two water pumps per line overclocked to 300 cubic meters of water. So we have 34 water pumps over here. So you can just imagine what kind of a logistical nightmare it is to try to make this all nice and neat and tidy. Generally, the support line's coming down. I think I've done a, a pretty reasonable job of providing a nice smooth distribution of our water here. It's not too stressful with where we're what we're dealing with here. Uh, it's organized, it's easily maintained. But the water pumps, that was a totally different story because we're on this little lake up here and we're trying to utilize as much space as we could for it. So this is what it looks like for all of the water support that's required for that nuclear power plant. There are 34 water pumps up here. Every one of these water pumps is all running at 300% overclock. And look at this. There's a line here that I didn't end up connecting. So that would have made one of my reactors not function properly. So we're gonna hook that in here right now and get that connected so that it's working properly. And then we are going to just color code those as well. I wanted to make sure that the pipes were easily identified as to what they are. So now I'm just gonna do a quick little double check because the next thing we're gonna do is actually turn on the nuclear reactor. Uh, we're gonna start running that uranium through. Of course, we've hit an autosave and autosaves in this game right now with the size of my factory are huge. Oh man, it takes so long for it to autosave. Oh, here we go. Here's another one that I failed to connect. It's a good thing we're here double checking this because it really would have sucked if I turned that on. And that would have been like two, four reactors that would have been running at 50% capacity, which just would have thrown everything out of whack. I'm expecting 75 gigawatts of power is what we're going to be generating off of this. So everything down here does look like it's all connected now. That's all connected. These are all connected. Let's look down this line here. Make sure that they're all connected. I think we're good. So the next thing that we got to do is turn this all on and see how it actually functions. But I would think, you know, all in all, this isn't bad as far as a spaghetti mess. Like, there's a little bit of like twisting and turning stuff. There's a little bit of clipping happening, but I just, I wanted to make sure that the water did not go above this height because I didn't want to deal with any head lift at all. And because we're so far up here in altitude, well, this is our maximum head lift point, is this pipe. So we can use water anywhere below this this height and never have to deal with a water pump. And let's just take a moment to have a look at what that looks like with all of those reactors down there and our recycling process, the support factories, all to run our little mega factory. That's It's kind of making the mega factory look like a tiny little box compared to how big the power generation is uh, which is still way more power than what's actually needed here. But, I mean, I wanted to be able to take this full line of uranium and get as much power as we could out of it. So, now it's time to turn it on. All right, let's equip ourselves with our nuclear, or our radiation suit. Got our hazmat suit on. We've got the radiation masks that we need. Let's grab some Mark V conveyors as we are connecting this line up with this system. Now we got radiation to deal with as it's flowing all through here. Radiation levels right now, crazy high. Now, all of this should start turning on here. Of course, now I can't fly because we're out of the uh, safe zone of now there's radiation here. So I had to take my, my pack off, but everything is starting to fire up here and slowly start building our power. There we are. We got our first few of our cells starting to run through. That means we're starting to get to a point where we should be getting 
some uranium fuel cells coming out of this. Here we are. They're starting to build up. So we have to wait till we get 20 in here before this thing kicks off. And then we should start seeing some power generation happening. And where we'll be able to monitor that is we can sit here and watch. So right now we're sitting at 27 gigawatts is what we're making right now. I'm expecting we're going to be up. But if all of these power plants kick in, we're going to be over 100 megawatts of power or 100 gigawatts of power. We're going to be probably at 1.2, 1.3 gigawatts of power is what I'm anticipating for our power generation. So this is all, we're going to start seeing this line here, this gray line, as these power plants come online, this will start to climb up here and then hopefully jump up and we'll see our blue line lowering down as, uh, of course, we're going to be using more power as well too because all of these various manufacturing lines are going to be kicking in and doing what they're doing. So where are we at here right now? This should be actually crunching out one. It takes a minute to make point. So actually, we're, we're going to be two and a half minutes for this to actually make one fuel cell. So it's going to take a little bit here. So let's come back once we've got some power generation. Well, it's taken a little bit of time, but it looks like we got about 20 of the reactors, 20, maybe 18 to 20 of the reactors up and running now as we've been stockpiling and uh, trying to build up some of the fuel in here. And we're sitting at about 70 gigawatts of power right now. Uh, we still have a little ways to go. Like some of the reactors are turning off and on just because it's still trying to basically get itself all caught up. So. I have brought another feed of fuel rods over from my other nuclear power plant just to kind of help speed up the process of getting this um, fully saturated. And then once it's fully saturated, I could disconnect that line and this will run completely independently. We are making uh, awesome things, awesome thing tickets that are already dumping. Uh, we've already made like 12 tickets off of this in the time frame that we've been able to get it up and running. But there we go. That's what you get for a 30 reactor, 600 uranium. We've got um, three blenders making nitric acid. We have about 10 refineries making sulfuric acid. We have 12 more blenders that are making our um, uranium, uh, what is it, the uranium fuel cells. And then we have a whack ton like 15 of the manufacturers that are making the uranium fuel rods those are then feeding into all of our reactors and then from our waste uranium we have what do we got here we've got six blenders that are converting waste uranium into non-fizzle uranium that non-fizzle uranium is then being fed into our three Particle accelerators are there and being combined with regular waste uranium, and that is making our plutonium pellets. The water that is coming off of making our non-fizzle uranium is all being run through nine different refineries over there to be able to make pure copper. That pure copper is being awesome, uh, dumped into an awesome sink. Um, over here, the Plutonium pellets are then going in to make plutonium fuel cells into, uh, I think they are assemblers that are over there. And I want to say it's, it's looking like two, four, six, eight, nine assemblers that are making our plutonium fuel cells. Those plutonium fuel cells are all being dumped into uh, the six manufacturers at the end that are making the plutonium fuel rods. And those are all being dumped into our awesome sink. There you go. That is it. 600 uranium into 75 gigawatts of power, fully recycled. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Next episode, I will touch base on the finish. There's a few more things that I got to build on the last floor of our mega factory. And then we'll basically do a summary of the mega factory build and that's going to basically wrap up all of my update five satisfactory and then we get to look forward to update six experimental right now um i'm not sure on when their official release date for update six is going to be but yeah 
Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So we will see you in the next one.